want to talk a little bit about the diagnosis for a shoulder impingement, and there's several factors that you need to rule in or rule out. Uh, one of the big things you have to rule out the cervical uh, spine or cervical radiculopathy creating uh, a fake shoulder impingement. So it's always uh, helpful to rule that out. Uh, you want to do your normal neurologic uh, exam with your reflexes. You can do your muscle strength testing, sensory exam. You can ask them about a positive Bacote sign. And uh, you can do uh, distraction and compression to see if there are uh, ridiculous symptoms aggravated with those tests. You can also, if you've taken a McKenzie class, a mechanical diagnosis and treatment class, you can certainly go through the uh, in range loading and see if any of that changes. So you can do some you can do some of your retraction and extension and do that repetitively to see if that changes it. And you can certainly do it uh, supine, which would be the same thing. You would still do retraction and extension. It's a great way to see if you can uh, eliminate those symptoms uh, with a, with that mechanical diagnosis and that leads into a treatment. So you want to rule the cervical spine out. So once we've done that, and that's uh, for this video, we're really talking about impingement, not radiculopathy. I just want you to be aware that you need to be uh, thinking about that from a diagnosis standpoint. I just go through a uh, quick uh, test to check for impingement. One of the tests is NEARS, and I just simply bring the arm up and do a little uh, uh, rotation e each way to see if I can pinch that and see if that causes any uh, pain. And then very specifically, where does it cause the pain? If they say it bothers your, their elbow, that's not a positive test. You want them to point to their AC joint. Now, I also am going to do horizontal adduction to see if that pinches. Where does that pinch uh, is what you ask the patient. Again, you want it to be pinching at the AC joint, not somewhere else where it's unrelated to true impingement. And then that uh, Hawkins coracochromiocubicular test, we go here, I kind of brace them, and then I turn, uh, turn internally rotate uh, the arm and shoulder and see if that pinches and yet again, where does that hurt? Then the next thing I go through is I, I, I test the, uh, uh, the supraspinatus and then I do it with a, a thumb up and then an empty can. So thumb up is the first part, I always test that. And then I do a thumb down, that's the classic test. And this one will m be much more likely to be positive with an impingement. I have them resist my push down. If it hurts, they'll, they'll give some way and they'll tell me that it hurts, relax. And again, they'll tell me where, I have to know where it hurts. That's an important distinction. So real, you can do those four tests really quick. So you've ruled out the cervical spine. You go right into the standard uh, test for impingement here, 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 and then thumb down, resist my, uh, resist my muscle testing. And that gives you a good idea. And I talked earlier about the, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, hook to chromium. That's going to make those tests more likely to impinge. If there's spurring, if there's thickening of the tendon, if there's some kind of calcific deposit, uh, all those things are going to make this uh, much more likely to be to be positive. Now uh, we'll go into the soft tissue in a little bit, but next we'll uh, change position and go into the adjustments. So I'm going to do my normal seated scan that I would do on patients routinely in that I would go up through the upper thoracic spine and then I'd go down and do my scan up into the cervical spine and checking for fixations. Especially in this upper thoracic and CT junction, those are gonna be important areas for these impingement patients. So I really need to know that that area is, is moving properly because if it's not, if they cannot extend through that upper thoracic area, that makes it harder and harder to be able to help these patients with these impingement problems. So I'm gonna check especially extension, I'm going to, I can check it going right down into the upper thoracic spine. I also am going to check lateral flexion in each of these areas going right down in, into this area. And then I can, uh, obviously I can check rotation. Uh, I kind of do a little bit of a combination of rotation with my extension. And I can just check to see how the movement is in each of those sections. So then that can lead me into my adjustment, either supine, uh, some people like to do the upper thoracic uh, seated or standing, and then of course you can do your seated CT junction adjustments. So the CT junction adjustments are taught all the time. Uh, we typically teach them seated, but not everyone do, likes to do the uh, CT junction that way. So you can do it prone and you can do it uh, supine. Supine's hard to do. Uh, anything except extension in that upper thoracic area. So we're less likely to do that. But those are the checks for that. We want to do extension or extension on a side 
and then we want to be able to do lateral flexion and we want to be able to do extension with rotation and check those movements and then we can adjust accordingly for that. I just want to emphasize that upper thoracic area needs to be addressed if you're going to uh, treat these impingement cases. Next we can go into a palpation for the uh, SC joint. So I go right in here. Um, I don't grab the SC joint and move it around because it tends to be very painful, uh, very tender on even, uh, even the healthiest of your patients. I put my fingers right on the SC joint and I move the arm back and forth and I move it up and down and I feel, is there movement at this? And I'll even rotate, is there movement at the SC joint? And it's, it's an, you, know, you can compare it if you'd like to get an idea of their relative mobility, but uh, the point is, is that that SC joint, that's a big one. Think about the posture, show me bad posture, Greg. Bad posture there, you're compressing that SC joint. So we need to be able to open that up. So sit up normal again. And so grab here, I can go front and back, up and down, and I can rotate. And those are all checks that I can then use. I'll use a long axis extension adjustment for that to open that up. So um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fleshy, this thenar, right over the SC joint, like that. Then I slide up underneath here and I grab like that. And all I do is distract and I can impulse from there. So it's an easy uh, adjustment. It's actually easier supine, and especially for the females that are watching this, if you don't want to have to bear hug somebody into you, that's no problem. I'm going to show you how to do this supine, and that'll be just fine for you. It does this does the exact same thing, so it, it's not a, uh, there's no preference. I'll go back, remember that check, then I go right back in and recheck, did I make a difference in it, and then I can, I can go from there. Now, for the glenohumeral joint, the big problem here is that it impinges. So you are typically, if you're doing posterior shear, and you, I stabilize my sternum against his scapula. If you're here, especially if you put in adduction, it will tend to pinch that, that AC joint, <clears throat> and so that's no good. We're not going to do that. So maybe you have to go here. Does it still impinge it? If it does, I'm going to show you a way to do this uh, uh, lateral and posterior to open that up better. But some of these people um, need this adjustment. Some people are going to, uh, that's going to be hypermobile. So those are more your scapular, scapular stability people. So posterior shear here or posterior shear with adduction here. My sternum is into his scapula and I'm pulling through into the, testing the posterior capsule of the glenohumeral joint. So it's a great way to check that uh, mobility, and then you can either mobilize from there or test plus impulse. So I can be here. Let's say he pinches here with adduction. We're not doing that. We're here. He says no pinch. I can mobilize here or I can test plus impulse right into, the, into that uh, fixation.